Streamlit is a powerful library for Python that allows us to build interactive web applications for our data dashboards or our machine learning models. We can use it to build apps that are easily deployable to our clients and our users without them having to understand coding or understand the back end. And it just makes it very interactive for them to use the machine learning model or interact with the data in the dashboard. Hey friends, I'm Andy and if you already knew that then welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to focus on how to convert from a single page Streamlit app to a multi-page app. This follows on from my previous video which got us started with Streamlit, so if you want to check that out be sure to have a look on my channel for that video. Alternatively, you can still follow along or use the code on my GitHub repository at the link down in the description below. And from there you can catch up and join in. So we will see how we can use the st.sidebar method to add a sidebar and a navigation menu to our dashboard. So this allows our users to navigate through our app without having to scroll up and down on a single page. So let's get started. So in the last part in the series, we saw how to create a basic Streamlit app. We saw how to add text to it, how to add data frame headers, as well as a matplotlib figure. So looking at this app, we could carry on and start adding more and more tables, more and more graphs. However, it's going to be one big scrollable web page, which we don't want. So we're going to see how to add a menu to this Streamlit app to make it easier for the user to navigate. If you want to find the code for the previous section or this current section, you can find it in my GitHub repository, which is linked down in the description below. So we need to start making some menu items and we can do that simply by adding Streamlit sidebar to our app. So what we can do is if we go up here to the text and we set up our sidebar, we can simply do that by calling upon st.sidebar.title and we'll give this a title and we'll say navigation. Okay, and then once we do that, we can then save it and right away when we do save it, Bear in mind, we've always we've got the rerun option set to on to auto rerun whenever we make changes to the code. So we can see now we've got our navigation sidebar here, and what we can do just to illustrate why why we might want the sidebar. So we may want to have the sidebar to take in the file from the user, and we can do that by changing this call here where we've got uploaded file is equal to st.file uploader. If I add in st.sidebar and then .file uploader and save this, we then see that our upload file section has now moved to our navigation bar. So this just moves it out of the main interface and just makes it cleaner. So the next step is to start adding some pages to our app and we can do that by using radio buttons. So if I go to here and we call upon st sidebar, anything that needs to be added into the sidebar needs to have this code here. So st.sidebar dot whatever we're going to add. So in this case I'm going to add some radio buttons and then within these radio buttons I'm going to add in um, our title, what it is, and we'll call this pages. And then we'll set options, which are going to be the user options, and we're going to set these as a list. So the first one we're going to look at the data statistics and then we'll look at data header and then the last one we'll be looking at our plot. So if I save that we now have this navigation bar here. So when we click on this we then choose different options but nothing happens in our Streamlit app. And to solve that, we need to create a few small functions to be able to display the right data in the right place. So the first one we'll look at is data statistics. So we've already got the code for our statistics, and that is df.describe. So our first step is to move the statistics into its own page. And we can do that by creating a new function called def stats, and then passing in the data frame. And then what we do is start writing our code in here. We will add st.header and we'll call data statistics and then st.write uh, data frame dot describe and th that generates the function that we need. So then this code down here becomes redundant so I can remove this from our file but when I save this we then lose the statistics from our app so we need to add it back in and we can do that by using our navigation buttons. 
So we've created this radio button side in our sidebar. So we need to then or create this as an object that we can call upon. So our options are going to be equal to that. Now we'll come down to the bottom here. We just use some if else logic. So if options is equal to uh, data statistics, and I need a double equals here, then what we're going to call upon is our stats function. So that's if the option is set to that, then it's going to call upon this. So if I command S and come uh, save this, so I just need to pass in our data frame, which is DF, and then save this. So when we run this, we'll see that the data statistics is added at the bottom of the home page. So the home page at the moment allow, or displays the header of the data as well as a figure. So naturally, anything else is appended onto the bottom rather than overwritten. So we just need to update a few more functions and we can create two new functions and we'll call def uh, data header and we'll pass in the data frame and we will then go down here and just copy out this section of code and pass it in here and then our last one is for our plot and we'll call def and we'll call plot and then pass in the data frame and again we can just go down and cut this code out of here and move it up here. And you'll see that when I save this file, everything disappears apart from the statistics. And that is because the statistics is the first page in our list. So we could create an extra option in here and we'll call it home and then do that. So if I bring the list over so that we can see everything that's in it, so if I save this, then we're going to have our home page, which will be blank. So I can go to the data statistics part, and then we have our pandas data frame describe information. And again, it's all interactive. You can scroll left and right in it. But then the other options haven't been tied to anything yet. So we can just go down to our logic and then start typing LF options equal data header then we're going to call upon our header which is called data header and then we pass in the data frame and then we just repeat this again where we're doing lf options is equal to plot and then we pass in df which is our data frame so now i save this and then we can go back to our streamlit app if i go into the home page we can then see that we've got nothing here and we've just got an introduction so this is good this is a good place to introduce your app and explain what the app is doing before going into the different methods or the different analysis. So I can now go to data statistics and we get the data statistics. So we've still got this information here at the top. So we could create a separate function where we could put extra information in so that it just removes it from, from here. And then we have our data header and then we have our plot. So we can see right away how much neater this is compared to what we had before where we had everything in a single page. And there we have it, we've seen how to go from a single page Streamlit app to a multi-page one by simply adding in a sidebar and then adding in the different menu options. So join me for part three, where we're going to see how we can bring in interactive plots from Plotly, and that will be released next week. So if you've enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you want to see more content from this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and ding that notification bell. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.